Good morning, beautiful Facebook friends. Um, I just wanted to hop on because I made a post called Naturally Supernatural. And I wanted to hop on and just have a quick conversation about it um, because I kind of want to explain a little bit more. And sometimes writing a post doesn't allow you to really elaborate because let's be real, not everyone likes to read, right? So in that post, I share how um, one of my next books may be called How to Live Supernaturally Without Being Weird. Um, and I say that jokingly, but kind of not at the same time, because I really believe that it's possible to live supernaturally or live in the prophetic 24-7 without being weird. Um, I know that some people, when they feel the spiritual realm um, there's like a physical reaction, whether they twitch or they fall over, maybe they laugh or something, right? And that's cool. Um, you know, I don't know how many of you actually know me, but if you've been to a Jesus House meetings, we've had some meetings that were really wild. I mean, really wild. And I participate and I feel it. Like I am a very what we say prophetic person really it's supernatural person um i sense it i feel it and i see it but you know outside of the context of those meetings we have a life that we have to live and that god has given us where um my my dryer is going and it's a little distracting so let's walk and talk so um i'm gonna close the door so I really believe that we can actually live supernaturally, like live in a way where we're hearing God, seeing God, feeling God in everything in the spiritual realm, yet still have a very supernatural, uh, very normal life. And when I use the word normal, I mean like you can function in society and live supernaturally. Um, you know, you can feel the spirit on something without falling over or without twitching, or you can feel a demon or an oppression without it completely taking you out. You can literally just push forward and move in the supernatural while you're doing something in the natural. Um, so you can be responsible, you can be on time, you can go anywhere and walk into any place regardless of what's going on. I mean, I have walked into uh, like witchcraft type stores and let me tell you something, it's real and I can feel it. And the first time I went into a store like that, I'm telling you, you can ask my husband, this is for real, I had to walk out. I felt it so deeply in my soul that it, I kind of like had this little bit of a panic. But now, I mean, I've gone to places where you can feel it and I just maneuver and I kind of chuckle because I can see the supernatural, feel it, hear it without anyone perceiving that that's happening, right? I have a full-time job. I have a family. I clean. I joke around. I play around. I go to sporting events. I know people who are Christian and non-Christians and have can have normal conversations with them without being perceived as weird or like I'm separating myself from them. As a matter of fact, what I do, what I intentionally do is try and draw them in because I love them and I want them to experience the life that I have. So, you know, again, if I have experienced some crazy thing at things at some Jesus house meetings, okay? Like there have been meetings where people are falling over and anyone who would walk in would seriously think that we were drunk or high out of our minds, okay? But we can't limit the supernatural to just things like that. And we also need to know how to 
experience the supernatural when people who don't know it are around so that we don't scare them and we don't push them away because what's the point? The gifts are there for the people, right? So they're supposed to draw people to God and teach people about God. But if they're alienating people, then there's something wrong. Something wrong is happening. We're, we're going about it the wrong way and we just need a little bit of wisdom. And I really feel that God has been working this aspect out in me and teaching me um, where I really believe that I live supernaturally. I can be working on a spreadsheet like deep in analysis and God will speak to me and I can act on it. Or sometimes, you know, like when people ask me for prayer, I will literally stop in that moment in my spirit, pray, because I'm not going to tell someone, oh, I'm praying and then never actually pray. Like I pray in the moment and I don't necessarily have to stop what I'm doing because it's, again, we were created to be naturally supernatural. We are the only beings that we know of that are natural, but on the earth but also supernatural at the same time. We have natural bodies, but we have spirits and souls that are moving in the supernatural at the same exact time. It is a gift. Being human is a superpower, and I wanna teach everyone how to do it, but without being weird and without alienating people and making people feel like, you know, it's just weird, because it's not. It doesn't have to be weird. I think a lot of times we make it weird because um, in a way it makes us feel like we are um, more spiritual. Like we're tapping into someone, something that someone else can. And the reality is that they can. Everyone can move in the supernatural. Everyone can see in the spirit. Everyone can hear. Everyone can feel. This is the truth and it's why so many people struggle with anxiety and depression and all these different things that they experience and they feel like they feel alone and they feel like no one understands and some of them are Christian and some of them are not Christian and I want to tell you that if you're that person where you just feel different and you don't understand what it is, I want you to know that it's probably, may not be, but it's probably because you're feeling and seeing and hearing supernaturally in the spirit and you just don't understand and there's been no one there to guide you and to show you and to teach you. I grew up feeling and experiencing crazy things but I never was able to cultivate it and grow in it because no one around me had the paradigm of what in the world was happening. But now I know, I understand, and I wanna help everyone so that you don't feel weird, so that you don't feel like you're off, so you don't feel like you don't belong, so you don't feel like you're possessed with demons or feel like you can't live a normal life because you experience these things. I'm telling you that you can have a normal life. You can have a job, you can have a family, you can have friends and move supernaturally many times without people even perceiving that that's what's happening, that that's what you're doing. So that is why I'm saying like, I don't know if it's gonna be my very next book or if it'll be incorporated, but I will be writing a book and teaching courses at some point on living supernaturally. And I call it naturally supernatural because that's how we were designed. We were all designed to move supernaturally. Take note, my brother um, helped me realize it this weekend. Take note that supernatural has the term natural in it. We are natural beings living in a natural world with the ability to move supernaturally in the spirit at the same time. There is no other being created thing that we know of that has this ability, only human beings. I'm telling you, being human is a superpower. So if you feel like you have this ability and you just can't put words to it, or you feel like in the Christian circles, 
you are not accepted. I'm here to tell you that God created you to be supernatural. God created you to move in the spirit, but still be normal. Still, like you don't have to dye your hair weird colors or you know, like react when the spirit moves or you feel something. You can just live your life and be in tune with what's going on in the supernatural. And check this out. Even if there's something dark going on or there's demons around or an oppression, you can be there and like throw out light and move the darkness away without shouting without even like uttering the name of Jesus. Because let's be real, a lot of people use the name of Jesus like it's a good luck charm, like it's a rabbit, a, like a, a rabbit's foot or tail or whatever it is that people use. The name of Jesus is not a good luck charm. You carry Jesus. You carry the name of Jesus. In Hebrew, in that tradition, names are who people are. It's their identity. And if you are a child of God and you believe in Jesus and you are a disciple of Jesus, you carry Jesus everywhere you go. You carry the name of Jesus. Whether you say it or don't say it, the spiritual world knows you carry his name. So when you walk into a place and you feel that oppression, like I've been into places like even witchcraft stores where I feel it. You walk in that place and you need to know that you carry the presence of Jesus. And by you being there, darkness gets cast out and they will know without you uttering one word. So know this, my friend, you are not weird. You are feeling accurately, you are seeing accurately, but you can live a normal life. And with Jesus, he'll give you the wisdom on how to do it. And it's something that I really do want to teach on. So I want you guys to tell me, like, do you relate to what I'm saying? Does this make sense to you? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And maybe you're someone who does feel the presence of God in a physical way really strongly. And it's preventing you from living what we would call maybe a normal life. Like how, how can I live a normal life when I twitch, when I feel the presence of God or something like that, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I feel like this is a big need in, in, in the Christian circles because there's a huge prophetic movement and it's become a little weird. Like people are almost um, making idols out of physical manifestations of the spirit, just like people make idols out of demonic manifestations. And I'm over it because we don't need to be glorifying manifestations or experiences, good or bad. We need to be magnifying the name of Jesus and God and goodness. He called us to share the good news. So I'm here to share the good news that living supernatural is possible for you and for me and for everyone else while still living a normal productive life, still sharing the good news and being carriers of the gospel and carriers of Jesus everywhere we go. So guys, you have a beautiful day, a wonderful Monday and a great start to the week. And what I will share with you is this, as we part, what can you do with this message? I want you to be aware. I want you to be perceptive. I want you to notice what's happening in the spirit. But more important than that, I want you to perceive God in all of it. Because it's very easy to feel things in the spirit. But the question is, can you perceive God in his heart, in his feelings, and what he's thinking through it all? Because that's what's going to help us live the Jesus promised life of abundance, peace, joy, and love. So perceive it, notice it, and notice the red thread of God's love in your life, in the details of your life, in every moment, ordinary or not. I love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye.